If you think it might be wonderful to live forever, you may want to hear what a Nobel Prize winning molecular biologist has to say that could change your mind. Venki Ramakrishnan has examined the latest science, weighed the possibilities and researched the ethical costs of lengthening our lifespans in his new book, Why We Die, The New Science of Aging and the Quest for Immortality. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. So humans now live twice as long as we did 150 years ago. Uh, but you raised some, some caveats to why we may not want to lengthen our lives that much longer. Why is that? Well, I think a society where everybody lived indefinitely or a very long time, say hundreds of years, would be a very different society. It would be quite stagnant. It would be the same group of people just living longer and longer. You wouldn't have that turnover between generations you know, maybe new ideas, things like that. But I think that's still in the realm of science fiction. I think biology is uh, looking at the causes of aging, and that's allowing us to tackle some of these causes. But most of the focus is how to live healthily for longer, because all developed societies are living longer lives. So we're having more and more older people well past retirement, and we want to see how can we keep older people healthy and productive, you know, and energetic and, and actually lively. So uh, I think a lot of biology is trying to understand those causes so we don't suffer uh, some of the debilitating consequences of aging. Explain why it is that sometimes our biological age doesn't match our chronological age. That's because aging you can think of as a, an accumulation of damage as mm. w over time. And we have very sophisticated repair mechanisms. And uh, we have ways to deal with the problems of old age, of, of the accumulation of damage, accumulation of garbage in the cells. We have recycling mechanisms. And all those things break down. And the, the rate at which they break down is different for different people. I explain the new research, though, that talks about how there are certain blood markers that indicate why people age faster than others. And, and we could say this is separate from drinking and smoking or, or lack of sleep. Yeah, so blood, th there are different markers for aging. So some markers are on our DNA. Our DNA acquires marks called epigenetic marks as we age. And that changes the pattern with which we express different genes. So, so it changes how our biology works. There are also markers in our blood. And this was found because when they connected an old animal with a young animal and allowed them to exchange their blood supply, the old animal benefited from the young blood. And that suggested there's things in younger blood that deteriorate or don't exist or have changed in older blood. Oh. And people are trying to find what those markers are. Let's say in the next few decades, we're able to, to come up with a cure for, for cancer, high blood pressure, uh, diabetes. What's the best case scenario, do you think, for the longevity of, of human life? So someone did a calculation, and if we eliminated some of the major causes of uh, fatality today, like the things you mentioned, uh, you would only gain about 15 years. Hmm. But what biologists think is, if you tackle the underlying causes of aging, then you could really uh, expect to uh, live a longer and healthier life. Really fascinating, Doctor. We thank you so much for joining us. We want to let our viewers know why we die. The new science of aging and the quest for immortality is now available wherever books are sold.